Story time with Adam and Don. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us again here at the Canyon City Public Library for another virtual story time. Let's get started with our welcome song, sung to the tune of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And it goes a little something like, welcome, welcome, everyone. Now you're here, let's have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll bend and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Now you're here, let's have some fun. Good job, everyone. Hopefully the children are still singing, enjoying these virtual story times. Just as a reminder, folks, we are open back up to the public um, and doing our in-person story time. So Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 1030. Please stop in and see us. Today, I'm going to read a couple of cute little books about owls. This first one is called Little Hoot. Little Hoot by Amy Krauss Rosenthal, illustrated by Jen Chorus and published by Chronicle Books. Once upon a branch, there was a fellow named Little Hoot. Little Hoot was a happy little owl. He liked going to school. Who, whom, whose. He liked playing hide and seek with his forest friends. He even liked it fine when Mama Owl said it was practice time. Time to practice pondering, sweetie. <laughs> okay, now practice your staring. Staring right, staring left, staring right. But there was one thing Little Hoot did not like. Bedtime. Because when you're an owl, you have to stay up late, late, late. That's just the way it is. All my other friends get to go to bed so much earlier than me. Why do I always have to stay up and play? It's not fair. If you want to grow up to be a wise owl, you must stay up late, said Papa Owl. And besides, I don't give a hoot what time your friends go to bed. In this family, we go to bed late. Rules of the roost. <laughs> Stay up and play for one more hour and then you can go to sleep, Mama Owl compromised. One whole hour, he boo-hooed. One whole hour, she cooed. So off he went and thought to himself, when I grow up, I'm going to let my kids go to bed as early as they want. He played swords, he played on the jungle gym, he built a fort, he jumped in the leaves, he jumped on the bed. Can I stop playing now, pleaded Little Hoot. Ten more minutes of playing, mister, and please don't ask me again. All right, the young owl scowled. One minute, two minutes, three minutes. Four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, ten minutes. There, I played for one whole hour. Now can I go to bed? Yes, now you can go to bed, but woohoo, woohoo, bedtime! And Little Hoot flew right off to bed. But wait, stalled Mama Owl. What about a bedtime story? And don't forget a glass of water, added Papa Owl. But it was too late. Little Hoot was already fast asleep. Snooze, snore, drool. So they tucked in his feathers, gave him a peck on the cheek, and they all lived happily ever after. The end. Little Hoot. Hopefully everybody has still been practicing some of the songs. Um, I know I've been really missing the kids in, but practicing good hygiene also. So um, our hand washing song, sung to the tune of Fur Jaka, goes a little something like, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, 
in between scrub them all together scrub them all together nice and clean nice and clean tops and bottoms tops and bottoms in between in between rub them all together rub them all together nice and clean nice and clean good job guys little owl's day Little Owl's Day, written by Divya Srinivasan and published by Viking Books. Chicka chicka chick, a squirrel was chittering loudly. Little Owl could sleep no more. He blinked open his eyes. Too bright to be moon, this must be sun, he whispered. Little Owl yawned Mama, go back to sleep. But Little Owl was wide awake. Wrens were trilling sweetly. The ground was covered in flowers little owl had never seen. Their petals were open for the sun and the bees. Moths, little owl called. But no, these were butterflies. Little owl thought he knew the forest well, but it seemed so different now. Dragonflies were skimming the pond. They even flew backwards. Little owl couldn't wait to tell the bats. Snake slid into the water, gliding among lilies and reeds. Turtle was sunning herself on the rocks. The meadow erupted with barks and yips. Wolf pups were at play. Their mother howled and the pups dashed off to meet her. Near Grumbly Cave, there was bear splashing after fish. You're always asleep, little owl said, when I want to show you the moon. You're always asleep, bear said, when I want to show you a rainbow. Come. I'm going to go see a rainbow. Little owl had never been to the waterfall. Look, there's a rainbow coming out of the water. At sunset, little owl started home. Deer bit blackberries from thorny branches. Bears were rooting around the brambles. A piglet squealed. Little Owl is awake. Hello, Little Owl, squealed another. The possums were only just stirring. Hedgehog was still sleeping, so mice feasted on mushrooms. Stars began to glitter as the sky went dark. The moon was rising. Oh, there's a little bat in the moon. Little Owl reached his tree. A bunny nodded a sweet good night and ducked into her burrow. Little Owl was astonished. She lived just below. Little Owl was excited to tell Raccoon all about his day. Then he had one more place to go. Little Owl was sleepy, but he had promised Bear he'd show him the moon. And there it is. The end. Little Owl's Day. Um, another one of my favorites. No Pirates Allowed, said Library Lou. By Rhonda Galler Green, illustrated by Brian Ajar. Published by Sleeping Bear Press. No pirates allowed, said Library Loom. <clears throat> At Sea Breezy Library, things were just right. Book lovers were cozy, the sky was blue bright. When shiver me timbers through Sea Breezy's door, stormed Big Pete, Pirate Pete, and his parrot Igor. Where be the treasure? X marks the spot. We'll dig up the loot and steal all that you've got. Squawk! Igor squawked as Pete muttered an R. Then Big Pete let loose with a scary so thar. Chills ran down spines as those readers all shook. They hid behind bookshelves but ventured to look. And what was that odor? Disgusting P.U. But no one at Sea Breezy knew what to do. Except 
Library Lou, who dashed over to see what all the unruly commotion could be. May I help you? Lou asked, with a pinch of a frown. This is a library. Shh, quiet down. Arr, Big Pete thundered. Don't waste me day. Walk the plank, saucy lass, or show me the way. At Sea Breezy, then, you can hear a pin drop. All that tough, rough and talk and squawk and stop. For Library Lou looked Pete right in the eye, and Pete stood his ground with a snarl. Oh my. Minute by minute, their tempers both flared as they stood behind, as they stood head to head and doggedly dared. Unless you be quiet and listen up too. No pirates allowed, said Library Lou. Squawk! Igor squawked with a blow me down glare. And Library Lou boldly added, so there. Arr! Now, where is this treasure map? Lou asked. Ah, yes. The treasure is here, she said, just as I guessed. I'll help you find it, but first I must ask of you and your matey a wee smallish task. Go home, take a bath, change your underwear too, then come back tomorrow, said Library Lou. Arr! A landlubber telling Big Pete what to do? But she said there'd be treasure. Sink me, tis true. <clears throat> so that night Pete scrubbed 13 layers of dirt and decided to clean underwear <laughs> couldn't hurt. Squawking Igor got a good scrubbing too. Swish through the sea sailed their funky P.U. Then later they dreamed of treasure for two. Squawk! The next day they burst through the library door with fresh soapy scent but as loud as before. Mateys, your manners, said Library Lou. Now come follow me, we have much work to do. Aye. Big Pete grabs his picks, his picks and an axes and shovel. But Library Lou said, don't go through the trouble. But lassie de loot, Lou said, not yet. First, say ahoy to these letters, this fine alphabet. Letters? Pete scowled, there be more than X. Lou spread them all out. Big Pete looked perplexed. Blimey, cried Big Pete. A code of old, a secret one. Aye, to find the sweet gold. Library Lou grinned, a witty wise grin. Brilliant, she cried. Now it's time to begin. Here they are, all of them. Pleased to meet you. Isn't this fun? Said Library Lou. Fun? Big Pete sneered. It be torture no less. Me'd rather be kissing a fat treasure chest. So many letters, Big Pete got confused. W's, H's, S's, and Q's. Some she called vowels, A's, E's, I's, O's, and U's. Soon Lou took some letters and mixed them, mixed them about. Look, exclaimed Lou, words to sound out. Now here is a stack you may take home with you. Then come back tomorrow, said Library Lou. Up on the poop deck, Pete practiced that night. He practiced these words until he got each word right. Igor, he bragged, will hold riches untold, cause us be, we be hardworking gluttons for gold. Yes, day after day after day, he went back, and night after night, Lou piled high a new stack. Soon, Big Pete was reading not small words, but big. Swashbuckling, buccaneer, thingamajig. But Pete got impatient. He worked day and night, and still not a trinket or treasure in sight. One day, he barked at Lou. Do what you told. You said you'd be helping me find that sweet gold. Correct, answered Lou. In a book, there's a clue. I've given you my help. It's now up to you. Pete stared at those books lined up shelf after shelf. A code, a clue. Arr, me find it myself. Maybe, just maybe, the code be in rhyme. He loved Mother Goose, Dr. Seuss, how sublime. They tickled his fancy, but no secret code. A vast, easy readers. He snatched Frog and Toad. Day after day after day he went back, and night after night he piled high a new stack. He found books called classics, great tales of the sea. Blimey, cried Big Pete. There's where the clues be. Treasure Island, me like it, but no clue be to be found. Stumped Big Pete scout <clears throat> scoured each shelf up and down. Gangway, the nonfiction. Dars where she be. Soon luscious loot fancy free on the sea. 
those factual books Big Pete come to love. He read about things that he'd never heard of. Stink bugs and baseball and surfing in Mars. Dinosaurs, mummies, electric guitars. Pete's picks and his axes and his shovel got dusty. A, p a pirate's ways, Big Pete got a bit rusty. Now, Pete wasn't a pirate just dreaming of loot, but a reader he was, and a good one to boo. When one book was finished, yes, one was done, Pete picked up another one. Oh, reading was fun. He read and he read and he read and he read. Then suddenly one night, Pete popped up in bed. The next day at Sea Breezy Library, things were just right. Book lovers were cozy, the sky was blue bright. When Big Pete and Igor tipped through the door, shh, and spotted Library Lou in aisle 404. They both gave her a hug, each a kiss too. We've come to thank ye, Miss Library Lou. Cause of ye, now we know books be the treasure. Shucks, whispered Lou, it's been my pleasure. Now Library Lou with a smile, big and proud, is hanging a sign that says, Pirates Allowed. The end. I said it is one of my favorite books, guys. I love how Big Pirate Pete changes throughout the course of the story. He finds out the true treasure was learning to read. Going into that, folks, um, September is our National Library Card Sign Up Month. So um, ever since 1987. The ALA American Library Association has been doing a big push along with the new school year to make sure that every student throughout the United States has a library card and has access to the great resources that we have available. So please folks, if you do not have a card yourself or if you wanted to get your kids, your children, their first card, bring them on down. The month of September, like I said, is a big push for a new library card, guys.